But let's open again with prayer. May we, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings and for the Spirit in this room now, Father. Thank you for these, Father. Father, as we partake of your word, let it be a blessing. Let it fall upon our minds. Let it guide us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The tree of life. When God, through Christ, uses an object to teach with or from, you must understand the horticulture of that object before you can really understand what is said. I mean, well, I know what a tree is. Well, let's talk about it a minute anyway. A tree is the largest growing thing on earth, that is to say, in vegetation, concerning grass, uh, flowers, etc. It always moves above and, every, and is above. A tree is... One of the only plants that never stops growing. It never stops growing. It continues to increase, increase, increase. Also, its life can be determined by the rings of growth per year within that tree as it continues on and on and on. Think of your own soul in respect to those life rings, those year rings that mark the tree. Is it not strange that at the end of each year there's another circle? Some of them big, some of them small, because you can look at the rings and know what happened. You can tell a great deal about it. There are basically two types of trees. They fall in two categories. The needle leaf, which is your evergreen, and the broad leaf. You can basically break all trees down into those categories. That tree takes in carbon dioxide and casts off oxygen, which is life. So when we say the tree of life, we're saying a great deal, and it is not difficult to understand why God used it as the tree of life. The very word you're holding in your hand comes from what? A tree the paper, the house, the home you live in comes basically from the tree. There are exceptions, of course. But somewhere in your life, you have depended upon that life giver for warmth or whatever. Not enough could be said about the horticulture of the tree in relationship to the inner point that God would want you to grasp. God said, I am a great fir tree, meaning an evergreen. What about an evergreen? It never sheds its leaves, basically. It's green year-round, forever, on and on and on. So is our Father. Not ending and no beginning. Let's just walk through God's Word and let's look at the tree of life. Christ was and is that tree of life. He was in the garden. Read of it in chapter 3. We'll pick it up with about verse 22. Remember, there was also another tree present in that garden, and I did not intend to use the negative sense in this day, but today. But there was also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is another lecture for another time. For that tree also is present. But today we're going to talk about that tree of life, and how it sustains us, for we also in the flesh grow. Though not necessarily as the tree, we grow and then we stop growth in flesh. But your inner man should be as that tree. It should never stop growing. You should never stop learning of the wonders and the mysteries and the beauty of Almighty God. His scriptures One verse should mean a great deal more to you year after year as more knowledge and wisdom is known. And those life rings of your soul expand and ultimately lead you into eternal life, not ending as the tree. Okay, Genesis chapter 3, verse 22, And the Lord said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. He is not innocent anymore. And now at least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. In other words, live forever means to have eternal life through that tree of life, Jesus Christ, 
the time was not yet. God had many things that must transpire before that salvation could be made available. Each entity had to pass through this earth age. One time, yes. And then on that day, that babe that was born in Bethlehem, who was truly that tree of life, again, the protection was taken away from that tree, and it was available. He even freed all those back to the time of this writing when he was in the prison, which is to say the tomb. He went to their souls, and he taught them. And many even there believed upon him, and he took them with him. Verse 30, 23. Therefore the Lord God sent forth from the garden of Eden, sent him forth from the garden of Eden, that is man, Adam, to till the ground from whence he was taken. In other words, that was the thing that must transpire. Adam must go forth. He must multiply. He must increase. For by the vehicles for the souls were provided. So he drove out the man, and he placed in the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way. That way is the path, all right? That's all a way is. It's a little road, a little path of the tree of life. What then, if we look closer, could we find in this tree of life? Turn with me to Proverbs. We're just kind of going to progress right on until we end up in Revelation. Right after Psalms, let's go to Proverbs 15. Let's pick it up in Proverbs 15, about verse 3 to begin with. Thinking again, keeping your mind on the tree, it's, non, it's never-ending growth with each year giving the growth of the tree. The eyes, verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. I want you to think of both the tree of the evil and the tree of the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. You understand that? Let it sink in. A wholesome tongue is the tree of life. You'll also find in earlier chapters of this book of Proverbs that wisdom is in part that that feeds that tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perversiveness therein is a breach in the spirit. What is, where is the tongue located in your body? The tongue naturally is located in your mouth, and what comes out of your mouth, but that expression from the inner man, those soul rings, if you would, of growth on that spiritual being held with inside you, comes words. And it's no news to any of you that the word is the tree of life. He is the word. The word was in the beginning, and the word is God. What comes out of your mouth and is derived by the inner mind of that inner man, that expression, whether it be good or evil, and God is always present to observe, depends whether you partake of the tree of life, which is to say, eternal life. Eternal life. Now, God's tree of life is not one entity, Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. It is a many-membered body also. The tree signifies this. As the tree grows in its greatness, uh, and those leaves take in the poison of the world and expel oxygen that gives life, uh, then so should you be as a servant of Jesus Christ. Not saying things that would harm or poison the minds of people or be detrimental to anyone in any way, yet at the same time doing it boldly if boldness is required, but in love, uh, take in the poison. Filter it through the inner man and put forth life-giving oxygen. Truth. Uh, because the tree of life is what? The tongue. The word that comes forth. Again, remember, were it not for the papyrus, which comes from the tree, the paper, you wouldn't have the word placed upon it. The two, uh, is it any accident? Of course it isn't. God knew this from the beginning and how dependent man would become upon that tree of life, both materially and spiritually, and how simple God's Word becomes when we 
look at the examples in reality that he gives us to simplify his emotion and mind, his love, that is to say, for you. Jesus spoke of this again in one of his greatest ministries to the people. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 61. Jesus actually lived out this Isaiah 61, that is to say a part of it, but he shall return to finish it. But I want you to note that there is something else involved in the program, the program of Almighty God. Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings into, unto the meek, and he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. This is Jesus. This is when he went to the captives that had died in sin, and the opening of the prison of them that are bound, bound in sin, bound in shortcomings. He paid the price on the cross, which was a tree within itself, uh, to bring the full circle. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, period. This is where Christ stopped, and he laid the scrolls of Isaiah back down, that papyrus upon, and in that religious house, so-called. And he stopped. Because his first advent was complete in proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. But you can't stop there, beloved. For you're in the final generation and you must go on. Go on with what? Let's find out. Let him tell you. And the day of vengeance of our God, that day of vengeance is coming. Those that would be reprobates in these end times, that would follow Satan rather than Almighty God, that would make a mockery of studying God's Word. God knows all, and that's all we need to have to comfort us. God is a God of vengeance. Leave the vengeance unto him to comfort all that mourn, all that are sad when they see the sins of these end times and this world, this age, as it transpires. He'll comfort you. He's real. He's not just... Words on a paper, they only are symbolic, they are his words. But he's also spirit and comforter to that inner man, that inner soul, that the year marks uh, expand year by year on that inner man, that inner self. Three, listen closely. You are involved, okay? Three, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Even though it sounds sad, it shall turn out to be a beautiful thing. The oil of joy for mourning. You can be joyful in him. Take comfort, for he is real. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is your heart heavy? Then let him lift that load for you. That they might be called trees. They might be called what? That they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Oh, I tell you, his words are beautiful. His message is ever so meaningful. In other words, meaning that you, as one of his body, become a part of that tree of life in teaching his word, in proclaiming it, in leaving the vengeance unto God alone, but to proclaim his truth, which is a sharp two-edged sword, and do it boldly, let me assure you that as long as you do that, there will be idle ones in the way that will be pricked with it, that will scream with pain and cry out in ignorance. Uh, but then let it be. God is able. His truth uh, has the victory. And they shall build the old waste, and they shall raise up the former desolations. Beloved, the body, many-membered body of Christ, those trees of righteousness shall accomplish this we're not playing church. It's not a place you meet once a week uh, and pass the time of day and then go back to the world. But it is reality. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations, all our inner cities, as they crumble with crime and riot, uh, with filth, uh, with perversion, uh, as it continues to depreciate uh, from the spiritual world this once was, it shall be repaired. There's good news. God has a tree of righteousness that shall bring healing 
it shall take in that filth, which is the carbon dioxide, and put off pure oxygen, a healing oxygen that shall bring peace uh, to this world through the King of Kings. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall come call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. This is not taken as men usually would take it, meaning that simply you are teaching, helping, guiding, leading for what was it that Adam was sent into the world to do with to till the ground, to plant the tree, to cultivate the tree, and to bring knowledge and wisdom in that tongue which is the tree of life. Uh, Present before all men. The Gentile is there out of love and respect to that one. For your shame you shall have double. Anytime you are persecuted for teaching God's word on this earth, rejoice in the, sh in the persecution, for it brings you a double reward. It is real. It is, as they sit still, you will grow. Your ministry will grow. And the, tre the tree a life shall grow. God will bless it as they stand still. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. This is God's tree. Those that make up that tree of teaching. Do you want to be blessed? It's a promise and it's real. We're not playing in this generation. These many gener generations, hence, the final generation, period. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I love fairness. I'm not going to let someone take a disadvantage of you. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I hate for someone to call themselves a church where my burnt offerings are taken when they're a bunch of hypocrites. And I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That is to say, his true tree. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. The seed of what? That tree. Back to the tree. Don't lose the thought. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, and my soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation, that gospel armor. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, uh, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments. Do you want to know when the major blessings are coming? When the bridegroom comes, of course. And as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Uh, not some woman carrying child and giving suck, as reported in Matthew chapter 24, lolling before the Antichrist. That will be their portion for not teaching God's truth, but a virgin waiting for her husband not deceived by Antichrist, but believing the rapture, so-called theory, the flyaway by-and-by story, and be seduced by Satan as Antichrist. Wait for your true husband, Jesus Christ. And as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. How many nations? God will bring peace to all nations. We have the victory in him. Will this stop during the millennium? Will there be no more tree of life during the millennium? Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 47. We're just going to progress right on through God's word. We're not going to have a long dissertation upon this because it is so simple. When you look at the horticulture of that tree that you then know and can understand what he would have you ascertain from it. We're only going to read one verse from this chapter. It happens to be verse 12. Now let me bring you up to date and solidify your mind as to location and time of this writing. Everything after chapter 40 in this book of Ezekiel is in the millennium. I say again, everything recorded in the word of Ezekiel has to do with the millennium temple unless it is referring in prophecy to something outside, but it is written and addresses that time and place. So you are in the millennium. Will we still have that tree? Verse 12, And by the river upon the bank thereof, 
on this side and on that side shall grow all trees for meat. For what? For meat. wonder if we're being told here, uh, given a little closer look at the manna. wonder if we are having a closer look at the manna. Whose leaf shall not fade. Now, what is it that these leaves are supposed to do? We discussed it. Think about it. You're supposed to take in carbon, carbon oxide, dioxide, dioxide. I'm not a chemist. I want to make that clear, okay? But they throw off oxygen. Have you looked to the north of us as the acid rain falls? Have you seen the fading leaves? And I'm not talking about the frost, the poison that pollutes and kills until indicating and a sign to those that know the horticulture of the tree that the sin of the world is about to overcome the ability of the natural to throw off the poisons. That leaf is never going to fade. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. There's no way that you that you that there will be a shortage or a famine. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, uh, because their waters they issue because their waters they issue out of the sanctuary. In other words, the waters, the spiritual waters that feed these trees shall issue from the very sanctuary of Almighty God with us. El Shema, God is there. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. What is it that the leaves do again? They are medicine for the healing, to take in the poison and to throw out life-giving oxygen. I'm talking materially now. Convert that in your mind to spiritual and you'll understand. You will understand how precious our God is, that he simplifies his word whereby anyone can understand his thoughts, his mind. Turn with me now to Second Peter chapter 2. I took a big jump that time in the Word. I think I said Second Peter, and I'm sure I mean First Peter. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm, I do mean First Peter. Chapter two. I want to pick it up with verse about nineteen. Listen to the words of Peter. And again, keep in mind the tree of life, Jesus Christ, his many-membered body. For this is thanksworthy. If a man, for conscience toward God, endure grief, suffering, suffered wrongfully. You know, anyone can suffer grief that you bring upon yourself pretty well, but wrongfully it takes a big man or woman to suffer that uh, willingly or in the name of Christ. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, that is the things that you do, you shall take it patiently. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. So if rebuff comes, do not let it upset you, one. Be patient with Almighty God. You can afford to be. We have the victory. If someone says something against you, you just don't. It is not necessary that you get your two cents worth in. All right, just so you get the last word. That's that's the beginning of an argument, not the end of it. Okay, that's only the beginning. So suffer for Christ patiently, for even here and too will be called. That's what that tree was called for, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that she should follow his steps. He was that tree of life in the garden. He was crucified to pay the price for you. He lived perfect. We don't. Yet how he was persecuted. Who did no sin. I mean, there was not one sin accountable to him. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Again, what is in the mouth? The tongue, which is what? The tree of life. The word who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. He didn't have to get his two cents worth in. 
When he suffered, he threatened not. He didn't hang up on that cross and said, God's going to get the whole bunch of you. He rather said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, but committed uh, himself to him that judgeth righteously. He left it in God's hands. Beloved, can you? Can you trust God enough to know? And if someone says something against you, you should, you should almost pray for them, for within 30 days, God will take them down. They will suffer a grievous sore in their life. By that I mean, it could be anything from an automobile accident, a broken arm, or whatever. You don't have to worry about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You do not have to worry about it. Trust God. He's real. He's there. And he'll handle it. You don't have to. It's not up to you. He loves you. He loves you to the very core, counting off those rings of life right down to that first, which was the beginning for you in the flesh. I speak of the rings in the tree, the spiritual rings of your life. That's what a Christian is. A Christian is a Christ man or woman that can follow Christ and follow the example that he set for us, which is so simple. And so easy to follow. And yet you can do it joyfully. Not grudgingly, but joyfully. 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Is it not ironic that that very cross or tree that he was, he paid the price upon would be the symbol, the living symbol of his teaching? Time should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You were healed then. That's why you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to take vengeance. Vengeance belongeth to God who paid the price. Don't you understand? When someone picks on you, they're picking on Christ. You're not gonna get, they're not gonna get away with it. I want to say that again. He paid it for you. Therefore, when someone picks on you, they're picking on Christ. And he will not stand for it. Therefore, you don't have to worry. You can smile and rejoice. And in another place, a fool uses uh, disturbing words. And wisdom from that same tongue brings peace and contentment. Words of hope. Words of comfort. For he also is that comforter. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. The bishop of what? The bush bishop of our souls. That inner man, those inner rings, the inner years, from the outer down to the one, the single ring, which is the center of your very soul. He is the bishop of that, and he's quite able, able to take care of his sheep. Well, what did he say concerning the sheep of his hand? No one, not even Satan, can take one of them from my hand. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 2. In his letter to the churches, Christ placed, one, the manna between uh, various churches in the 17th verse of this chapter, that between the church of Ephesus and between the church of Smyrna, in the seventh verse, he writes a, a special verse to those that have ears to hear. And it reads, chapter 2, verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is the bodies, the trees even of that body, if you would. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Where is the location of this tree of life? It is in the midst of paradise, which is to say... If you know anything about the temple and the land acreage allotted, uh, it also is in the midst. It is in the midst that the water comes from that feeds that. The prophecy fulfilled in this is explained in the 22nd chapter, the closing chapter of God's Word and the closing chapter of this particular study. I just want to read a few verses from the beginning, if I may. Chapter 22 and verse 1. I want you to remember back to the Millennium Writings in Ezekiel chapter 44, and yes, even back to the garden. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. This is the water of life, clear and crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. 
the water of life feeds this tree, not the, the polluted water of this world. Think in a spiritual sense. In the midst of the street of it, or on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manna of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Again, remember the horticulture of the leaves, those filters of the earth, those filters even, if you would, and in the Greek there's a rich hidden uh, logic in this, not even allowing boredom, if you like. No one's going to be bored in heaven. Heaven is wherever God is. That's here on earth. Uh, three. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. There won't be anyone, beloved, but servants there of God. Okay, The others will have departed by this time. In the closing verse, we skip to verse 14 of this chapter. Blessed are they that do his commandments. This is 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right. Underline it in your mind. Have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. I'll oh, bless your heart. How good God is to us that he would take a simple thing that grows in most fields or around houses planted for shade is the example set forth of the almighty plan of God whereby each time you look at it, it can remind you of his mighty works to bring salvation to all nations. Some men look for the sign on meeting rooms at the United Nations and other places where they gather and argue when it's really quite simple. The truth was in their yard probably before they left home if they were lucky enough to have a tree. The example of peace, of God's almighty plan that did not begin here, and I would even go one step further and say there. Even Judas, even Judas who betrayed and in a sense, initi- uh, um, brought about the, that thing that would execute the movement toward him that would cause Christ to be nailed to that tree or cross was hanged himself from a tree. Justice. Did Christ have to worry about it? No, it came to pass quite according to God's plan. So when you look at your life and when you look at your way, you know that you've got the victory. Know that Almighty God is able. He can give you a large growth ring each year, or he can give you a small growth year each year. And this is one of the things he meant when he said to Job, Where were you, Job, when I watered the grass, the flowers, the trees uh, for the animals that you didn't even know existed? He's in control. If he can control both the lean years and the fat years... uh, On this earth, what do you think he can do for you spiritually if uh, you follow his commandments uh, and obey him? Oh, we all fall short and we're sinners. But he paid the price. And he loves you. And he wants to draw you near to it, into the inner rings, the rings that never stop growing. His truth, his word as it spreads and expands the globe and showers his truth, that sword, back down to this earth. Thank him that he has chosen you to have a part in it. We all do. Let's go to his throne. Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for your word and the comfort that is in it, Father. Oh, Father, in these end times, Father, we just love you so much for protecting us, for caring for us. We know that shield is there, and it cannot be penetrated. Uh, it cannot shut off the life flow of the truth, Father. And we just thank you in Jesus' precious name for the privilege of being able to serve thee. In his name we pray. Amen.